Capital expense savings begin with technical efficiencies in the category of compute. There are three major factors here. The first is that consolidating with multi-tenant allows spare capacity to be utilised. Think of all the single occupancy vehicles on the typical morning commute. Why does each of these cars need four or five seats when only one is occupied? It's because the same vehicle is also needed to carry the peak load, perhaps taking mom, dad and junior to the beach at the weekend. There aren't many three-seater cars, so even a three-person family will typically drive around in a five-seater car. Those spare two seats are the excess capacity. Similarly, standalone systems are seldom perfectly sized for their workload. The primary requirement is that they be configured for high water. That is, they must at least be big enough to handle their peak load. If you try to run a database on a server which is underpowered for the peak load, you failed. Excess capacity, resulting from an overprovisioned server, is inefficient, but it's a secondary problem. As a result, servers, like cars, tend to carry excess capacity. Considering a large number, of these systems in aggregate, the excess capacity adds up to quite a lot. In a consolidated environment, with a single large server of comparable aggregate capacity, many more application databases can be supported. Second, multi-tenant's consolidation model eliminates replication of overheads. Again, the transportation analogy works well here. Replication of overheads is inefficient for two reasons. First, by definition, it represents redundant use of resources. And second, these overheads compete with each other. Net throughput is limited and gridlock is possible. Legacy virtualization models replicate a resource-hungry software stack. Each VM runs a full copy of Linux and a full copy of Oracle. Even without VMs, running multiple independent databases in a single server is inefficient. By contrast, in an environment consolidated with Oracle multi-tenant, we have a single shared set of overheads, a single set of background processes, and a single shared memory area, the SGA. This model uses resources far more efficiently than a VM-based consolidation model, and by design, greatly reduces the competition between workloads. Third, multi-tenant allows resources to be shared elastically between all the workloads. This includes both CPU and memory. Real workloads tend not to be steady. A load curve plots the instantaneous system load over a period of time. In this simplistic example, we see the various load curves for a global organization over a 24-hour period, with EMEA shown in red, Americas in gray, and APAC in yellow. We see the peaks in each division's workload, presumably corresponding to the working day in that part of the world. Because of the differences in time zones, of course these peaks do not align. A basic principle of consolidation is that the more workloads you consolidate, the less likely it is that they all reach peak load at the same time, just as we see here. Now, if we were to run each of these workloads in a standalone server, we'd need three servers, each able to handle its division's peak workload. In a consolidated environment, we only need to size the server for the aggregate peak workload. Because the various peaks do not coincide, this is significantly less than three times the individual peaks. In this example, we can see that the highest aggregate workload requires less than two-thirds of the combined capacity of the unconsolidated systems. Consolidation using VMs or stacked databases in a single server allows for some elastic sharing of CPU between workloads, but not memory. 
It is very important to note that, with multi-tenant, this ability to share resources elastically between workloads applies both to CPU and to memory. So let's map source to savings in this category of capital expense reduction. Reduce CPU and memory by utilizing spare capacity, eliminating redundant replication of overheads, sharing peaks and troughs in load curves. The benefit of all this efficiency is that you get more applications per server. So the savings are that you need fewer servers, consume less power, occupy fewer floor tiles in the data center, pay lower HVAC costs. You even reduce your license fees. Because support costs are typically a function of license fees, those will be reduced too. Although strictly speaking, that's an operating expense, I think it belongs here because the savings are derived from the same source.